Finding the distance between two points, lesson 22e. Remember, there's links in the description to help you, all right? Have you ever heard the saying, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line? And that was said by Archimedes, and he's considered probably the greatest mathematician of ancient times. We can find the distance between two points by either using the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. Now, the textbook wants us to hone in on the distance formula, but I'm including the Pythagorean theorem in this lesson, and it's actually discussed in lesson 27a. We're only at 22e. So we're going to talk about this again, but I needed to include it now. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and it's great to use when two points are graphed on a coordinate plane, and you actually see the two points. Or we can use the distance formula, which is great when we have a set of ordered pairs. See? Now at first glance, this formula appears to be very difficult, but it's not. If we break it up into little parts and do one part at a time, it's no big deal. So if you look at this, I'll explain all of this throughout the video, but if you look at this, it's just saying to take the second x and subtract the first x and then find the square of that and then take the second y and subtract the first y and square that. So let's see how this is done first with the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Well, we can't just count the number of square units for a diagonal line's length. If we have a square and every side is five inches, that's the definition of a square, right? All the sides are the same length. If each side is five inches, when we go to measure the diagonal, it's going to be 7.07 .07 inches. See? So you can't just say, okay, here's a diagonal line. I'm going to count the squares. You can't do that. The diagonal of a square is longer than the length of a side. The measures are different. When two points aren't on the same grid line, we can find their distance by using the Pythagorean theorem. So this point is not on the same line as this point. See? We use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We have a squared, that's going to be our rise. b is going to be our run, remember, from rise and run. And then the line that we're trying to find, the blue line, is going to be c. Well, if a is 3 and b is 4, we do 3 squared plus 4 squared, and that should equal c squared. 3 squared is 3 times 3, that's 9. And 4 squared is 4 times 4. That's 16. And when we add 9 plus 16, we get a 25. And what's the square root of 25? It's 5. So we could say 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. See? The square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So we know the length of the blue line, C, is 5. This long line for C is called the hypotenuse. On a right triangle, see, that's a 90-degree angle, so it makes it a right triangle. This long piece is called the hypotenuse. And we're going to talk about that more when we get into geometry. And these are called legs. But we're using this as the rise, and that is the run, right? Now, the textbook wants you to learn this. We can figure out what ordered pairs are by looking at their x and y values on the grid. So if we didn't have these numbers here, these ordered pairs, we could find them. This is a negative 6 and a negative 7. So that's that ordered pair. This is an 8 for x and a 5 for y. So we've got our second ordered pair. And remember, the points are chosen from left to right. We talked about that before, from left to right. Even if it's falling, we go left to right, OK? And we can use the distance formula when given two ordered pairs. So we have a negative 6, negative 7, and we have an 8, 5. See that? And we plug them into the uh, formula. This is x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. And we talked about this before, that those little numbers are the subscripts, and they tell us which number is which. Here's the first x, here's the second x. Here's the first y, here's the second y. That way, when we're doing formulas, we can just plug them in according to where they are, see? Now look at how this distance formula is written. It says p sub 1, p sub 2. So that means point 1 and point 2. 
Sometimes you'll see the distance forming and it'll just be a D there. But what it's saying is the distance between these two points. See that? So we need to plug in our numbers into here. So here's our first ordered pair and our second ordered pair. It says we need to take x sub 2 and subtract x sub 1. x sub 2 is an 8. x sub 1 is a negative 6. We need to do 8 minus a negative 6. And look, there's a little 2 there, so it's squared. Then we need to do y sub 2, which is a 5, and subtract negative 7. And that's squared. Now remember, when we subtract a negative, we add the opposite. So if we have 8 minus a negative 6, we're going to add, so that turns into a plus sign, and the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6, so we have 8 plus 6. This negative sign turns into a positive because we're going to add, and the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7, so we have 5 plus 7. Now we've got 8 plus 6, which is a 14, and it's squared. And we have 5 plus 7, which is 12, and it's squared. We talked about exponents in video 20a. When the exponent is on the outside of the parentheses like this, it affects everything on the inside. Okay? 14 times 14 is 196. 12 times 12 is 144. We add 196 and 144, and notice they're all still underneath this radical square sign. See this? We add them together, and we get 340. Now what we need to do is get our calculator and push this square root radical sign, 3, 4, 0 equals, and we're going to get 18.44. And it's approximately 18.44, okay? So that's the distance between those two points. If each of these squares is a centimeter squared, then it's going to be centimeters, 18.44 centimeters. If each square was an inch, then it would be inches. If each square was a yard, it would be yards. Okay, so depending on the increment, that's what it would be. Here's another one. It says find the distance between 5 for x, 6 for y, and negative 2 for x and 6 for y. So here's our first ordered pair and our second ordered pair and we put them in according to the distance formula. We do the second x minus the first x. We get negative 2 minus 5, and it's squared. Then we do 6 minus 6, and that's squared. Negative 2 minus 5 puts us farther into the negatives, so we have a negative 7. It's squared. And we have 6 minus 6, which is 0 squared. Well, 0 times 0 is 0, so we're going to just drop this off of the equation and not even worry about it anymore. A negative 7 times a negative 7 is a positive 49, so now we just need the square root of 49, which is 7. So the answer is 7. Take a look at this one. We've got this triangle drawn on a graph. See? And this is triangle P, Q, R. Remember, they're labeled with capital letters so we don't confuse them with variables. It's asking us, what is the length of side PQ? So it wants to know the distance between here and here. We find the ordered pairs for P. The ordered pairs would be negative 6, 4. So we write our negative 6, 4. And for Q, it would be 3 for X, 2 for Y. And we plug it into our formula. We've got 3 minus a negative 6 and that's squared, and we have 2 minus 4, and that's squared. Remember, we have to add the opposite, so instead of 3 minus a negative 6, we get 3 plus 6, and 2 minus 4, well, that's a negative 2, and that's squared. 3 plus 6 is 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. When we add 81 plus 4, we get 85. See how it's all still under the radical sign? On our calculator, we hit the square root symbol, 8, 5 equals, and we're going to get this really long decimal number. But usually in math, what you do is you round to a couple of place values after the decimal point. This 9 is telling the 1 to go up to a 2, so we have 9.22. And remember, this double wavy line is the symbol for approximately. So it's not equals. We can't put equals here because it doesn't equal 9.22. It equals this. And my calculator didn't go on any farther, so who knows? It may have continued on. So we just use approximately 9.22. All right? So it might even have that as one of your options on the test. It'll say approximately which one is it. Okay? 
So remember, you would have to round it. So in a nutshell, to find the distance between two points, when given a graphed line with two points on a coordinate plane, we just make a right triangle, count the units of rise as A, count the units of run as B, and find the distance between the two points, the length of that hypotenuse, that long line, by using the Pythagorean theorem. We have A, the rise squared, B, the run squared, and it's going to equal that hypotenuse, that long side, C squared. And remember that you're solving for C, not C squared. If the length of side a is 3, then to find c squared, we square it. The length of side b is a 4. We find the square of this to add together to find c squared, but the answer would be c, because the length of this would be 3, the length of that would be 4. We're just finding what c is by using this formula where they're all squared, okay? So c squared is not the answer. c would be the answer of the length, all right? When given a set of ordered pairs, and we don't have a graph, we just identify which are the first point and the second point with their little sub numbers, and we substitute those values into the distance formula. And we just solve for D. And we do our subtraction and our addition and our multiplication, and we find the square at the end, and that will equal D, okay? Now, there's also a formula called the midpoint formula. See this one? We can also find the midpoint of a line by using the midpoint formula. We just take those ordered pairs, those two ordered pairs, and if we're given that this point is 2 for x, 1 for y, and this is 6 for x and 3 for y, we can find the exact location, the coordinates of that red dot, that midpoint. And even if the dot's not there, we could put the dot there by finding the midpoint. We plug our numbers from our ordered pairs into this. We're going to add the x's, 2 plus 6, and we're going to add the y's, 1 plus 3, and they're both divided by 2. So 2 plus 6 is 8 divided by 2. 1 plus 3 is 4 divided by 2. That's going to give us 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 4 for x, 2 for y is the coordinates for the midpoint of that line. So if we needed to put that point there, we could, because now we know where it's supposed to go, see? So there's a distance formula and a midpoint formula. Now this is not included in the GED book, but I thought I'd throw that in because, well, the GED book is skimming over Algebra 1 crazy, all right? You should now be able to do that skill focus on page 259, and following this video is going to be one of my grade 8 videos about distance formula. It's grade 8, 12.3, it's just going to be following this video in the playlist, in the GED playlist. If you think you completely understand the distance formula and how to find the distance between two points with either a graphed line or with two ordered pairs, then go ahead and go to lesson 22F. If you think you'd like to watch that video and it might help, then just keep watching the playlist and that will come up next, okay? So the next lesson is finding the equation of a line, and we're going to talk about slope, intercept, line, and intercept B, and all of that stuff. And I'm going to have links to these videos in the description. These two grade 8 videos precede the one that's going to be in this playlist, but they talk about the Pythagorean theorem. And these two talk about the Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula. And then I'll have the previous videos for this lesson 22 in here, 22 A, B, C, and D, okay? And don't forget, you need to make a point to watch these algebra word problems in that playlist to really become familiar with word problems because there's so many on the GED test. You want to be able to say, I've seen that before. I know what I'm supposed to do, okay? All right? So hopefully you'll be okay and you'll watch those videos. That's my advice. I really don't want you to skip around. I don't want you to miss any steps, okay? You're just making it harder on yourself. Your brain will learn easier if you take each step gradually, adding as you go, you know, each new concept instead of skimming back and forth and back and forth, all right? I'll see you next time. Bye.